Anything you work hard at, anything you put a lot of effort into, anything you sweat over to make it happen, the question is, why are you working so hard? The answer is, your programs and your subconscious don't support that. When you're thinking, that's conscious mind, creative, I'm thinking. If your conscious mind is driving the vehicle, let's say you're controlling your nervous system, controlling your behavior, you got the hands on the wheel, you're driving the car with your wishes and desires. I wanna go here, I'm gonna go do that. And I say, great, wishes and desires. Let's say you're walking down the street and then all of a sudden you have a thought. The conscious mind at this moment, is it paying attention to the walking on the street or does it go in, inside your head and look for the answer? That's a question. The moment the conscious mind went ahead, it's not paying attention to what's going on on the outside, is it? When my conscious mind is in thought, my subconscious by default becomes autopilot. When I am thinking, my conscious mind is engaged in creative imagination. By definition, it's not paying attention. And whatever behavior I'm engaged with at that moment is now going to be run by what? Subconscious program. Autopilot. When you're thinking, autopilot subconscious is in control. How much of the time are we thinking? The average person, 95% of the day has a thought going on, which means 95% of the behavior during that day is programmed and managed by the subconscious. Your life is not controlled by the conscious mind, which is wishes and desires, okay? It's controlled by the subconscious, which has been programmed by observing other people. And then your life becomes an expression of their behavior. The programming of your subconscious started in the last trimester of pregnancy and was intense from year zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and by seven starts, the programming is less. So the first seven years are programming, okay? And they say, but how do I know what the programs are? 95% of your life comes from the subconscious point. Your life is a printout of your subconscious programming. So you don't need to go back in your life to find out who did what the who to create the life that you have. All you have to do is look at the life you have because it is an expression of your programs. The things that you like that come into your life easily are there because you have programs to encourage and support that. Anything you work hard at, anything you put a lot of effort into, Anything you sweat over to make it happen, the question is, why are you working so hard? The answer is, your programs and your subconscious don't support that. What if, and this is not a what, it's a can do. What happens if I change or rewrite my subconscious? What if you took all the negative behaviors that are interfering with your life and rewrote them with very positive behaviors with wishes and desires that are the same as the conscious mind so that either the conscious mind or the subconscious mind are both are operating from wishes and desires whether you're paying attention or not paying attention you're still playing wishes and desires and so in other words you can have a honeymoon life the rest of your life every day the only reason you lost the honeymoon is because you went back and got caught up in playing the old tapes and sacrificing and sabotaging yourself without even you seeing it, and the honeymoon ends. If you had rewritten the subconscious program so that they conform and aligned with your wishes and desires, then it wouldn't make any difference if you're thinking or not thinking. Your behavior in both situations would always lead you to the full happiness of the honeymoon experience as a way of life every day of your life. We look at our lives. We have wishes and desires, conscious mind. We have subconscious program, as psychologists tell us, running 95% of the time, downloaded from other people, and sabotaging our lives. Now we can identify the programs by just looking at your life and saying, where's the part that you want to happen that's not working? And then test your subconscious for whether it supports those beliefs or doesn't support those beliefs. And if it doesn't support what you want, then you can rewrite it. Conscious mind being creative can learn in a creative fashion. Conscious mind can read a self-help book and after one reading go, oh yeah, I've been educated. I know how this, I should do it this way and my life could be really good if I understood this. And then you say, well, I just read the book and I understand how it all works and yet my life is still exactly the same. You can go to the lecture, you can read the book, you can watch the video, you can even just go, aha. And the conscious mind being creative can learn just from simply that, read the book, it learned. I go, what about subconscious? I go, it's a habit mind. 
I said, well, how do you create a habit? They go, ah, reading the book once is not a habit. <laughs> so what's the point? The self-help book you read was picked up information-wise, educated, and enhanced your conscious awareness, and yet didn't touch any of your subconscious programs. You have the same behavior you had before you read the book, after you read the book, okay? Why? Conscious mind learns by reading the book, subconscious habit, you don't learn from that one reading of the book. Here's the three things to rewrite your subconscious. Number one, how did it learn in the first seven years, the programmable period? I say, oh, the brain was in a low vibrational frequency called theta, which is hypnosis. So I say, oh, so if I use hypnosis, I can download a program. I can say, yes, you can. That's how you can do it. The vibration of theta is a low vibration. It's below consciousness, which is alpha. And a higher vibration in alpha is beta, which is like schoolroom studying, you know, work mind, work consciousness. The next one down is more calm, is alpha. When you go down below alpha, theta, which is the uh, hypnosis or imagination phase as well, because children in that theta period, first seven years, mix the real world and the imaginary world seamlessly. And that's because theta is imagination and reality mixed. And, and then below theta is a one lower vibration called delta, which is absolute sleep. Every day when you wake up, you're coming from Delta, the lowest vibration, just as you're waking up in the morning, just as you're coming out of sleep, the immediate like groggy period in that beginning, that's Theta. That's where imagination and hypnosis and reality start to mix together. Every day when you're going to bed or when you're waking up, you go through a zone of Theta. Naturally, from sleep vibration Delta, the lowest, to waking up, you have to go through Theta. Theta's imagination. So guess what? If you put earphones on and play a program as you're going to bed, just as your conscious mind lets go and is not paying attention to the program at this point, you're, you're really going off into sleep. Theta is engaged. And what's Theta doing? Taking the program and downloading it into the subconscious mind, because that's what Theta does, hypnosis, bypassing the conscious mind, which just went to sleep. So every night, putting on earphones and playing a program of a behavior that you want to create in your life, repetition of that every night will then manifest that experience. And number two, what about programming after age seven? I go, oh, well then the conscious mind's working. So I, how do I put a new program in? I say, you practiced. You repeated something over and over and over again, making a habit out of it. So repetition, so I say, oh, you find that your behaviors are not supporting you, then guess what? Generate a behavior that represents supporting you and repeat it just like a player on a sporting team go out and do the practice. Just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Even if it's not real at the time, it will become real as it becomes downloaded as a program. Your subconscious will take that program and then use it to manifest life from it. Uh, those are the two fundamental ways. Now, let me just add the last one, and this is really important because uh, you can find it on my website, there's a whole listing of belief change modifications. And these belief change uh, modalities all involve something called super learning. And what's relevant about them is these are practices where you can rewrite a subconscious belief in about somewhere between five and 10 minutes. A belief you may have had 40 years affect your life using some of these technologies you can rewrite that belief, make a positive belief out of it in anywhere between five and 10 minutes. Yes, we've been programmed. The vast majority of the programs are negative and disempowering. So yes, the vast majority of people on this planet are having that negative experience as well. So the next most important thing now is to recognize, well, if I'm not getting what I want, is it because the universe is not giving it to me? And the answer is almost inevitably no. It's because your own program that's invisible operating 95% of the day is keeping it away from you.